What is going on everyone? Welcome to the Ionic Crash Course. Let's go over how to build an app using the newest version of Ionic, Ionic 4. Before we get into things, for those who don't know what Ionic is, Ionic is a framework for building apps. It's built on web technologies that allow developers to reuse their already existing skills. Most importantly, Ionic is free and open source. So developers can use the framework and also contribute back to the project as well. With Ionic, you can build apps that not only target iOS and Android, but can also target the web or native desktop. All this can be done from the same code base with 100% code reuse. At its core, Ionic is a collection of web components. These are a web standard baked into every major browser. Using web standards not only allows Ionic's components to ship with the smallest code footprint possible, but allows us to be resilient against breaking changes in frameworks. We also ship integration libraries for the most popular frameworks. Currently, we have support for Angular and the Angular CLI, but we'll soon ship support for Vue, Preact, and React. But to work with Ionic before getting into any frameworks, you can just use the JavaScript and CSS directly. To get started, let's go to our editor and reference the Ionic CSS bundle and then the bundled Ionic JavaScript file. With this, we have everything in place to start adding Ionic components to a simple web page. With this as our base, we can even start prototyping features of our app before getting into framework decisions or how to scale our app. When we're ready to start our project for real, we can use the Ionic CLI to bootstrap everything for us. With one simple command, the Ionic CLI can start a project based on a predefined template and with our framework of choice. To use the Ionic CLI, we first need to install Node.js and NPM as well. We recommend downloading the LTS version of Node as that's the most stable. With Node and NPM installed, we can install the Ionic CLI by running npm install g ionic. Depending on your setup, you might need to run this with sudo in front of the command or from an admin prompt on Windows. With the CLI installed, we can start a new app by running ionic start, the project name, in this case, my app, the predefined template, and in this case, we'll just say blank, and then our framework of choice. And for this project, we'll use Angular. The CLI will go through, start an app, and then install all the necessary dependencies that we need. After the project has been created, we'll get a little prompt asking if we want to integrate with the free Ionic SDK. If you want to learn more about it, you could check out ionicframework.com pro and read over the pro documentation. For this video, we don't necessarily need it and can say no. Now that the project has been created, we can run CD and then the project name that we created and take a look at our project. With the project created, we can start a live reload server and launch it in the browser by running ionic serve. Let's open up our editor and take a look at the project. One thing to note is that since this is an Angular based project, we get an angular.json file. With this file, we can configure all of the build options and serve options since we're just using the Angular CLI under the hood. After we have our project configured, we can go over to the source directory and check out the bulk of our app. From here, we have our index.html where we can see we have this app root component already in the body of our HTML. This app root component associates to our app component inside of our app folder. Our app component template is appcomponent.html and its associated component file is the app.component.ts file. This is all wired together through the app.module file, where we can see we have the app component being imported, as well as a few other imports from different Ionic packages. This Ionic module import is the main entry point for our Angular project. With this imported and added to the imports array of our root app module, we have access to all of Ionic's components and all of its services as well. Now this app module bootstraps the app component and our app component is just a class with an associated Angular component decorator. Its main selector is the app root, which is inside of our index.html and its associated template is the app component.html file. If we look at the app component HTML file, we have an ion app component 
as well as an ion router outlet component. The ion router outlet component behaves similarly to the Angular router outlet component, except it includes all of the different animations that comes with an Ionic app. Since this is a router outlet component, we need to go to our routing module file to see the different routes that we have available. This app router module file is an Angular convention for us to place all of our routes and have it available as an import. Here we can see we have two routes available. Our index route redirects to the home route. So every time we load our app, we'll automatically get redirected to the home route. And once we load the home route, we're going to lazily load the home page module. Let's take a look at that home module by going to the home folder and opening home.module.ts. Since this is an Angular project, we use Angular conventions to lazy load different components. In this case, by referencing the home module as a string, we're automatically loading this module and then using the router.forchild method to lazy load the home page. So when this module gets loaded, it'll automatically load the home page component. Let's take a look at that home page component. Since this is a blank project type, there's not a whole lot here. And we can check out the associated template for this file and see that we have a header component with a toolbar and title, as well as an ion content component with some text inside of it. Let's go ahead and add a button to display an ion toast. We'll add a new line and then add the component ion button and say show toast. We can change the size of this component by setting the expand property to block. This will go and display our button as a block level element, taking up the width of the screen. To add a click handler to our button, we'll use Angular's event binding syntax and then create a method called show toasts. Let's go back to our component class file and then we're going to import a toast controller from the at Ionic Angular package. We'll go back and import the toast controller and then down into our class, we'll create a constructor where we will inject the toast controller and close out our constructor. Further down in our class, we'll create our show toast method and we'll need to make this a sync. Now we'll make this a sync because the toast controller actually returns a promise. So to see this in action, we'll create a new instance of a toast by saying await this dot toast controller dot create. And inside here, we'll pass a few different options to our toast controller create method. So we'll say the message is going to be hello from toast and we're going to give it a duration of 2000 milliseconds or two seconds now once this controller has finished creating the toast we're going to go ahead and present the toast closing out our show toast method we'll go ahead and save our file and from the browser, we'll click the show toast method and we'll have our toast display at the bottom of the window. Now our app in this single view is not that interesting. So let's go ahead and add a new page by using the generators built into the CLI. We'll run Ionic G page and then we'll give it a name of our page. In this case, we'll call it detail. Under the hood, this just uses the Angular CLI's generate command to scaffold out a component along with a SAS file and also update the routing module for our app to include the new component. Back in our app, we can go over to the component itself. And inside the component, we can create a new ion button. And instead of attaching a click handler, we're going to create an href and set the URL to detail. When we save the file, 
and then go to the new page. We'll have a header bar pre-filled with the component's name and an empty place to put in all of our content. To navigate back to our home page, we can use the arrow buttons in the browser's toolbar to actually integrate with the browser history and navigate back. Since we can't always guarantee that there will be a browser back button to hit, we'll open up our app, go into the detail homepage, and in the header bar, we'll add an ion buttons component. And inside of that ion buttons, we'll create an ion back button component. Now to control where the buttons will render, we'll use a slot property and set its value to start. Go ahead and save this file. And when we navigate to the detail page, we'll automatically have this back button added to the header bar for us. This is a change coming from Ionic 3 as the back button was automatically handled by the app itself. Now we have to be a little bit more explicit about where a back button gets rendered so you can have complete control over if a back button should be added to a page or if it shouldn't be added to a page. Now, if we go ahead and try to reload this page, you'll notice that we lose the back button. This is because there's no history according to this instance of an app. To work around this, we can set a property on the back button called default href. And we can set its value to the default URL that we want the back button to go to. So in this case, we'll set it to load home. And then when we save, the back button will show up again and we can navigate back to the home component. We can also navigate to the detail component by using the Angular router. In this case, we're going to import the router from the Angular router package. We'll come down to our constructor and we're going to add a new entry for the router. And then we'll create a new method called navigate. And inside this method, we'll call this.router.navigate by URL and then pass it the URL we want to navigate to, in this case, detail. We'll save this file, go back to our home component, and we're going to create a new button. And in this case, we're going to remove the href, add another click handler, and call navigate. When we save, we'll be able to go to the second button, click that, and navigate to the detail component. Our app already has a lot going on in it right now, so we're not gonna dive into too much more detail, but if you wanted to find out more about Ionic 4 and all the new APIs that we have available, you can check out the new beta docs at beta.ionicframework.com. We also have a migration guide that we've been maintaining to help developers update their apps from v3 to the new version of v4. And if you wanna get involved with some of the community and some of the discussion around Ionic 4, you can check out the forum, our worldwide public Slack channel, and as well as getting involved on GitHub. Thank you for using Ionic. We hope you have an awesome time building apps.